pilot's driver, hurry. So where's your base? On BB-8, tell him. The Eilenium system. Yes, the Eilenium system. That's the one. Get us there as fast as you can. I'll drop you to the Nema terminal. What's up, YouTube? Prop guy back here again today. We're going to be looking at a really cool piece, and that is the Spin Master Hero Droid BB-8. Now, this is a big guy. Uh, he's about 16 inches tall to the top of his head here, and the top of his big antenna, he's about 19 inches tall. Um, so, he's very movie accurate. Um, look at the details on him. He's got a little bit of a weathered wash to him, which is very nice. Uh, Obviously, we never see him brand new in the movie, so it's really cool to get him like this, I think. Uh, he is plastic construction, um, but that's not really a big worry for me. The, the cool thing is the interactivity with this guy. Um, he comes with a remote to use here. It's um, got three different modes. You have a uh, just regular on mode, a off mode on the remote is a voice control mode. He's all voice controlled. And a third mode here, or two, is a follow me mode. Now he's got sensors on the remote here. He's got one, see, two, and three different sensors here. And he's got a clip for you to put on your back. And he's got infrared sensors on his head. And he will follow you around like that. Um, he will also use these sensors uh, just to pick up the controls from the remote. It's a radio frequency controller. Uh, he's got three different position settings. So in theory you could have three of these running around and they wouldn't interact with each other at all. Uh, I guess it would also help with um, if you're picking up any interference from like a microwave or a cell phone or something like that. I guess it would probably help with that too a little bit. But taking a closer look at the details, uh, it's really nicely well done, really well sculpted. Um, nothing looks out of place. There's not really any big seam lines or anything. Um, the, the things that you do notice down here, you have this little door that flips out. That's the on switch for him and the plug to charge the battery in the main body of the ball here. And that takes just over an hour charge, hour, hour and a half. Um, so that takes quite a while on the body. The head is a separate thing and it just attaches with magnets. And mine's a little dirty because I play around with this guy a lot, especially my daughter. She loves him. He's got three, ma four magnets here. Two are really strong ones. The other two not as strong, but hold really, really well. Uh, he's got these wheels here that spin. That um, do a really good job of helping this move along the head, the body along the head. Now it does make noise because you know plastic and it's got these grooves in it, so you will hear that. Uh, in terms of looking at the head, you got some light up areas here. This area lights up and you get the red light here. You also get a blue light here sometimes. The speaker is hidden pretty well. It's in this groove here. Uh, you, obviously, you got your sensors all around his head. Um, you got the antenna. Now, these just plugged in. I'm not going to plug them out right now. And the battery door for this one is right here. You flip this up. And then you have your... Switch to turn them on and off, and this is your radio controller switch, your ABC settings. Also have a little light there, and this one plugs in with a um, USB cable, actually. And they give you a charger. It's just this on there really well. Um, they give you a charger for the body, and they give you a USB cable for the head, but they do not give you, give you a power brick for it, so you'll have to use a power brick for like a cell phone or something like that. Uh, charge time for the body, like I said, is about an hour, hour and a half. For the head, it's only like 30 or 45 minutes. So there is a bit of a delay there between the two devices charging. Um, in the instruction manuals, they do say make sure that you charge it once every three months. Make sure the battery stays good and current. The batteries are built into this. So in terms of warranting it, I'm not sure how that will go. I guess you would have to talk to the company about either getting replaced or finding someone that can solder in some new batteries for yourself. Um, other than that, eh, not really quite sure because, you know, they're built in. They're not user replaceable. They're, there's no real access points to them. Uh, in terms of battery life, I've never actually had them die on me. Um, and I've run them for 
about 30, 45 minutes at a time. He's supposedly good for like an hour, thereabouts, uh, just depending on what you're doing with him, how much you're running him, stuff like that. Uh, turning him on, we will start with the controller here so he won't move around too much because I got him on this table. As you can tell, he's really well balanced. Um, there's just a level system of counterweights and things like that. So he does wobble a little bit, but he's balanced a lot better than some of the offerings that Hasbro has brought along. So we're going to turn our switch on here. And that brings that light. So it's wondering, hey, where's the rest of the deal here? And we spin him around, we'll find that panel. There it is. Turn on the body. And he fires right up. Oh. And he's trying to find some balance here. That's one of the cool things is he will move around to make sure he can find that balance that he needs. Now, as you can see, he just sitting there, he'll, he wants to be you know interactive and things with you so if you're just leaving them sitting he'll spin around try to get your attention like that but looking at the controller if we move the stick this way he leans over move it that way he leans over that direction um he won't spin around on his own axis so what you have to do is you kind of have to lean him and then go forward and then he will spin like that but he does go rather quickly, um, which is good. I had the, um, when Force Weapons came out, I got the first little Hasbro one that was like a Target exclusive. And I thought it would be really cool and neat, and it was a gigantic waste of money. It was nowhere near movie level like you would have wanted it. Not even close. This really is about as close as you're going to get. I know there's this the Sphero BB-8, which is really good too, but... It's a lot smaller. Um, it doesn't have all the lights and stuff like this one does. Um, and this is really a big toy. And it's, I think, about half scale to what real BB-8 would be, which is really nice. Um, originally, he retailed for, I believe, $230. I think now you can get them as cheaply as, like, I don't know, 50 bucks or so. They did not sell well. Um, they've been getting rid of them as quickly as they can. At different Walmarts and things like that. But at 50 bucks, he's definitely no brainer. Even at like 150 or so that he's been at for a while, he's definitely worth it. Um, back to the controller here. There's a center button here. That if you press it, he will do a random action. As he goes to take out my camera there. Um, which is, it's interesting. Now if we switch him over to voice command mode. Hey BB-8. Hey BB-8. You gotta wait for the white light to light up there on the side. Where's Ray? Where's Ray? Move ball. So he'll respond and interact with you. Now the third mode that he has, thrown all the way over there, is a follow me mode. And he'll just whoop, take out the camera. He will just follow the controller to wherever. It is. Uh, one neat little tip and trick I discovered is if you press and hold the center button, he will spin around for you real quick, which helps instead of having to spin him all the way around the room because he does have a big, large turning radius. Um, you can shorten it by throwing the stick all the way over and just lightly moving him forward or backwards. That will help tighten that turning radius. Otherwise, it is rather big. He takes up a lot of room when he's running around. He gets really fast, which is good. Um, not quite to the level of speed to the Spiro one, but still quick enough that he feels very movie-like and lifelike. 
This is actually one of my daughter's favorite toys. He's a great prop replica, I believe. Um, especially for not a lot of money now that they're super, super cheap. I wish he had sold better. I think he's really fantastic. I actually think he's a lot better than the Sphero BB-8 in a lot of ways. Uh, not just with size, but with interactivity and all the features and things like that. If you ever get the chance, I definitely recommend picking him up. He's a great, great friend. Great little toy. Till next time, see ya.